Of the 12 Irish species of willow herbs, nine have been recorded in Offaly, ranging from a diminutive species that arrived here from New Zealand and now uh, thrives in rocky places, in Sleeve Bloom particularly, to the stately great hairy willow herb, which is one of the loveliest flowers of, uh, of our wetlands. But surely the most stately, the most statuesque of the willow herbs has to be Rose Bay willow herb, which uh, down to the 1860s was more or less confined to gardens, but after that uh, it has spread uh, everywhere, especially in waste ground, other uh, grassy places, uh, and, and so on. Um, and there are a few wildflowers uh, where a number of things can be demonstrated with particular clarity. First of all, uh, it, it, it shows very clearly the need to take the fourth dimension of time into account when you're trying to understand it, or, or to, particularly to visualize the pollination strategy of particular flowers. And the second point is, uh, it, it enables us to see particularly clearly the advantages of the spike or raceme form of floral architecture. Uh, a spike is where you have flowers up a stem like this, uh, maturing successively from the bottom upwards, so that you have flowers of different age, uh, ages at different uh, parts of the spike. And a raceme is where the individual flowers on the spike each has its own, its own stalk. Uh, and also, third point, uh, is that uh, this is one of the best flowers where you're trying to explain the important concept of dichogamy, which is the botanist's term for the strategy where the male and female parts of an individual flower mature at different times, making self-pollination either impossible or very difficult. In the case of Rose Bay Willow Herb, uh, the, the strategy, the dichogamy strategy is protandry, where it is the male parts that mature first. Uh, and in the early stages of the flower's development, uh, self-pollination is rendered effectively impossible. An added point of interest uh, is that this concept of dichogamy was first explained clearly in relation to Rose Bay Willow Herb itself by the great German botanist Christian Sprengel in the 18th century. So let's take a closer look at the flowers now. Uh, you can see the, the flowers are held almost vertically. There are four petals and four sepals, darker in colour, alternating with the petals, helping to augment the conspicuousness of the flower. And the significance of the X form of the petals, rather than being in the form of a cross, is that there's no obvious landing platform for arriving insects. In fact, the only place the insects can land uh, is on the, on the stamens, which are held forward like the fingers of the hand. You see, the arriving visitor has to land, land here. And at this stage, the stamens are just beginning to dehisce, to shed their pollen. First one or two are just beginning there, and as time goes by, the others successively will, will, will shed their, their pollen as well. Now, at this stage, the stigma, you can hardly see it, it's way at the back of the flower here. I'll try to bring it forward, there it is. It's the same colour as the petal, so it, uh, there it is. You see? It's held completely at the back, and the four, the four uh, lobes of the stigma with their receptive surfaces are kept firmly together so there's no possibility of them picking up pollen from any of the stamens at this stage of the flower. Now if we move from that then to uh, a slightly older flower here uh, you can see more of the stamens have dehisced and if we go down a little bit further one two three most of the stamens are shedding pollen at this stage and you'll see that now the stigma and style have moved forward there's the stigma, and you can see it's just beginning to open into its four valves, and it's just beginning also to take up the position previously held by, uh, by the anthers. In other words, this is now going to become the most conspicuous uh, landing platform for arriving insects. And if we look further down here, you see at this stage now, all the, all the anthers have shed their pollen, and there is the receptive stigma with its four recurved lobes. Now, nectar production is at its maximum in the, this female phase of the flower. Uh, the reason for that is this. 
Uh, nectar is secreted by a sort of a green fleshy area at the top of the ovary, which is behind the flower here. And it's stored in a sort of flask that's formed by the swollen bases of the filaments of the stamens. If I move the flower down slightly, you can, you can see the flask a bit in there. And you can see the spaces between them. Now, as the style begins to expand, what happens is that uh, the gaps between the flask there opens. In other words, the flask is ruptured, and it's easier for uh, pollinators to, to access the nectar at, at, at that stage. Um, all of this is a lot easier to appreciate if you, get, if you take a hand lens to it. If you use a, a 10 magnification there, uh, the, the, the little flask is so clear and, and so obvious. Um, so only strong-tongued insects can access the nectar in there in that little flask, uh, which limits the, the, the visitors, the pollinators, to uh, bumblebees, uh, honeybees and, uh, and, and hoverflies. And even at a later stage, if we look at the other side of the flower, there we are, there's the, there's the four lobes of the stigma. And you can see the petals are beginning to fade at this stage, but even after the petals have faded, you'll see the way in which the stigma still remains receptive, even at that stage. And if no visitors arrive, what happens is that the, 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 the stamens, they kind of straighten up a little bit and put themselves in a position where, as you can see there, they are in a position to transfer pollen from the anther to the stigma and bring about self-pollination if cross-pollination hasn't taken place at this stage. Uh, so, by one means or another, uh, most of the flowers are going to be pollinated. In fact, it is very rare, uh, very rarely that you see a stand of rose bay willow herb where all of the, uh, of the capsules don't have full complement of seeds. Uh, there's the ovary. The ovary is what looks like a stalk at the back of the flower, you see? That's the, that's the ovary. And each of those contains, oh, uh, something in the region of 80,000, uh, on the entire plant between them, uh, 80,000 tiny, tiny seeds, each with a little plume that makes them the most efficient of airborne seeds of all flowers. All parts of the plant are edible and have featured in traditional recipes and remedies in various cultures where the plant is abundant, uh, most notably perhaps among uh, Native North Americans and in Siberia, where a liquor distilled from the shoots uh, mixed with fly agaric uh, is said to be comparable in its effects to a combination of gin and LSD, whatever that may be like. Uh, closer to home, perhaps, the honey from Rose Bay Willow Herb is excellent.